this time, a volunteer with uh, People Govern Not Money and then volunteering to help on research committee. Thank you. Um, um, so there was a question early on about uh, the number of registered voters who actually donate. Is that appealed on the database, whether or not the person is registered voter? Is there any linking of the database to registered voter database? No. Okay. Um, the second question, um, well, it's a question probably for the commission as well. Um, to the extent that the commission uh, may be analyzing the data, um, to what extent should they be doing it in collaboration with your office? Would you want to sign off on things that the commission does with the data? Or is it really independent? That, we can have that conversation. Okay. It's kind of an open-ended question. Okay. Um, but we can have that conversation. And my staff and I are, are willing to sit down with people and, and show them what's on the database and make sure that they understand where they're going with it. That, that's pretty basic stuff for us. We do a lot of that, actually. Carmen, for the benefit of those on the phone, uh, we can hear Michael quite well, but others uh, are very faint. So perhaps uh, somebody could repeat the question or either stand closer to the microphone just so that we can follow along. Okay, well, we'll do that with the next question, sure. Any other questions of Mr. Sullivan? Yes, well, could you come up? Yeah. Could you come uh, over my here? Name is Matt Keith. No, no, I'd like you to come over here. Okay. Right, right there. There you go. Okay. My name is Matt Keith. I'm in New Bedford. And I don't know if this would necessarily be within the scope, but basically my question is, um, it sounds like your office actually has a pretty good handle on like contributions from individuals and corporations and other entities like that. And you mentioned a little bit that like we're kind of like the envy of other states. Yeah. And I'm wondering what kind of sense you have of like what it's like in other states. Thank you. Um, well, I'll give you an example. Oh. Kentucky is trying to right now require electronic filing of their reports and building a website similar to ours to put the information up. Uh, there are other states who will only put up PDFs of reports, so they're not sortable. Um, there are some states that have moved along, um, but they use they kind of use ours as the standard that they try to get to, I think. I mean, that's what they tell me. So you get a sense that a lot of them are kind of far behind? I do, yeah, I oh. do. And I will say this as a kudos to my IT guy. Our, our director of IT was originally an auditor in our office, so he understands what it is that we do, and he's able to put that into the code uh, and, and allow people to be able to search and find what they need to find. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, come up. Come up. Hi. Uh, you can come over here. Over there. So we're trying to get you to these oh, two mics. No problem. These two mics. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Matt Zola. I'm from Attleboro, and I just. Two questions, some not really related whatsoever, but kind of quick. Uh, first one is how far back does your website track, uh, you know, campaign contributions? Two thousand two is when we started. Two thousand two is when we started. Okay. That website and those and those contributions data source, that's a result of the clean elections ballot question. Okay. That was part of that. And then the second one is so you mentioned before that there was a challenge to the corporations uh, ban mm -hmm. uh, financing. How often do our laws here in Massachusetts get challenged in court? Not very. Not very often? No, I haven't been a defendant a whole lot of times. Okay. When they sue me, it's really good when they say, in his official capacity only. <laughs> <laughs> Not personal. Not personal. Not personal. Okay. okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for your testimony today. We appreciate Welcome. you coming. Have a good rest of the meeting. I'm going to go have dinner. Thank All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think I'm... I feel like, and uh, Carstas, I think at this point we'll open it up for some questions or, or some testimony from uh, some testimony from people present. May I point out uh, our local site before the oh, Hold on just yes. a second. Go ahead. Bill, Carstas? I'm sorry. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. That's great. Okay. All right. So, uh, is there someone who would like to offer some testimony? You raised your hand first, so you're first. Where, where would you like to come over you? here? You can you can sit down if you if you like, uh, and and I'm going to put this microphone over here so that the video will get you what you're saying, and uh, yeah, we'll keep that we'll keep that chair as anybody who testifies. Okay, will sit anyone in that who chair. testifies will go to that. Yeah, chair. that way okay. then we don't have to play Mickey Mouse and box. Good around. idea. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Could you tell us who you are? Yes, my name is David Rosenberg. I live in Norfolk, Massachusetts, and okay. I uh, appreciate having the opportunity to address the commission. Um, I know that I'm going to give you uh, four minutes. I will try to. Do, do you think you need more time? Maybe five. 
All right, go ahead. Five minutes. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, I, I know that since you uh, applied for to join the Citizens Commission, you must understand the problem uh, that we're facing. In fact, just following the national news would inform you and probably scare you about the problem. Uh, for example, in order to be reelected, members of the U.S. Congress are forced to devote a large proportion of their time to fundraising rather than doing their jobs. I'm told that it isn't unusual to spend 50% of their time in fundraising. Um, the likelihood of legislation being enacted is almost completely independent of the public support or disapproval. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the likelihood of legislation being enacted is uh, significantly affected by the support uh, or disapproval of billionaires, special interests, and wealthy corporations. And corporations um, can, in effect, veto legitimate laws by claiming that those laws violate their inalienable constitutional rights that they assert they have through corporate personhood. Uh, in order to remedy the situation, we need an amendment to the U.S. Constitution that affirms that the rights protected by the Constitution of the United States are the rights of individual living human beings only, not the rights of artificial entities of any kind, be they legal entities, aggregations of people, robots, or artificial intelligent entities, and uh, that money spent to influence elections is not protected free speech and must be regulated to ensure equal access to the political process for all Americans. 19 states have called on Congress to propose such an amendment, and Congress has not acted. Since all currently serving senators and congressmen got elected through the current process, it's working for them. So the required two-thirds majority are not likely to propose a change. Looking back at how Congress was motivated to propose amendments that they resisted in the past, we see that uh, states calling for a limited amendment um, proposing convention has worked, and in some cases, it's the only way that uh, we were able to motivate Congress to propose a needed uh, amendment um, was, was the threat of uh, a limited amendment uh, proposing convention as the number of states calling for a convention approached the two-thirds required. Uh, some people have been scaremongering that we can't uh, risk an amendment proposing convention because it might run away. but. We need to call for a limited uh, amendment proposing convention um, because that's the only way to motivate, motivate Congress to act. Um, it is very unlikely that there actually would be an amendment proposing convention because Congress has never let that happen. Every time we came close in the past, Congress has always decided that they prefer to propose the desired amendment themselves rather than allow an amendment proposing convention to do it. There's considerable legal uh, opinion that an amendment proposing convention can in fact be limited to the specific topic for which it was called. If a limited amendment proposing convention were actually convened and if it did run away and propose an amendment that was beyond the scope of its limited charter, the three quarters of the states needed to ratify an amendment is sufficiently high to bar, um, uh, a sufficiently high bar to prevent ratification. And lastly, comparing the extremely low risk of the chain of a limited amendment proposing convention actually being convened and the convention actually proposing an amendment that went beyond their scope and that uh, the out-of-scope amendment actually um, was ratified by three-quarters of the states, that's an extremely low risk compared with a relatively high prior probability that um, with no amendment proposed, things will continue getting worse. Ordinary citizens will have less and less influence over our government and it's clear that we have to take extreme, have to take the extremely strong, ri small risk to avoid the otherwise almost prob, almost prob certain probability that our democracy will be replaced by a corpor corporatocracy. Remembering our Commonwealth's place in history, Massachusetts must add our voices to those of the great movements of the past, which sought to make the dream of democracy for all Americans a reality. Thank you. Could you spell your last name, please? Yes, Rosenberg, R-O-S-E-N-B-E-R-G. Um, I was going to hand you the written copy of that. In my oh, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much. We appreciate your thoughtful uh, commentary. And obviously, those are all issues that the commission will be grappling with in the months ahead, and those are all things that we will take uh, into consideration. But thank you very much for raising, uh, raising them for us once more in this forum.
thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so. Thank you. So is there, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah will you come over and, and sit right over there, please? Um, hello, my name is Waboy, and I am the Outreach Manager for American Promise, um, and I want to thank you all so much for having me today. Um, thank you for the opportunity to submit this testimony on behalf of American Promise, a cross-partisan, non-profit organization working to secure the rights of people by, right, secure government of the people, not by money, um, by winning a 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Like I said, my name is Waboy Gadru, and I'm the Outreach Manager for American Promise. I also had the distinct pleasure of working on Question 2 Ballot Committee that established this commission um, since the fall of 2017. It's so humbling that after almost a year and a half of grassroots advocacy, this historic commission is finally here, pushing our nation forward to a government of equal citizenship, human liberty, and a responsible self-government. American Promise is leading the effort nationally to pass and ratify a constitutional amendment to secure these principles of equal citizenship, human liberty, and responsible self-government, bringing to bear deep expertise on the amendment, executing a strategy to move Congress through our amendment pledge, and convening the movement annually at our national citizen leadership conferences and through our collaborative writing the 28th Amendment program. American Promise is a cross-partisan organization, which means that we are not nonpartisan in that we encourage people to bring their political views with them to their support for this amendment. But, set, but we also set aside our differences when it comes to working together on this critical issue that so many of us agree on. Nor are we bipartisan in that supporters of American Promise are Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Greens, Libertarians, and all other political identities. And this diversity is reflected on our advisory board, staff, and membership. In my capacity at American Promise, I've had the pleasure of working with citizen leaders across the nation who are eager to decrease money out, money's outside influence in our political system. In working with these incredible citizens, I've witnessed the awesome power of this movement and its ability to bring Americans together, even in times of great political division. The creation of this commission is one such story. I started at American Promise in September 2017 as a citizen empowerment coordinator. And one of my first assignments was to help organize the People Govern Not Money Ballot Committee's statewide network of over 500 volunteers in gathering the 100,000 signatures needed to create question two. Truthfully, this task was quite easy because these incredible citizen leaders were determined to succeed over the course of that year, we petitioned voters in all conditions, rain or shine. Every Monday night, we would have a captain's call where each captain of these different areas of the state would enthusiastically shout out how many signatures we'd gathered that week, tips on how to better engage voters, and events to attend in the coming days to garner more signatures. This group was able to generate over 150,000 conversations statewide around the issue of big money in politics and the solution of the 28th Amendment. In our conversations, a, cute, a, cute, a few key themes emerged. One, the voters of Massachusetts care a great deal 